at the risk of being heretical tonight. You will be free. I have somebody that will represent me. An attack on you, apostle, is an attack on the kingdom. So people don't understand that. You know, if you go down, the kingdom goes down. And you could go ahead and force God's hand right now. How do we know who or what a heretic is? I mean, we use this word, we use this label a lot. We throw it around. There are some people who are true heretics. There are some people who are not heretics, but unfortunately get labeled as a heretic. If a person promotes a heresy, does that necessarily make them a heretic? Well, the truth is not all people who would offer up a heresy will they be categorized as a heretic. Sometimes you can do something just kind of in ignorance. And so we need to figure out one, what a heretic is, and then what causes a person to be called a heretic. So what is heresy? Well, let's go to the Bible. First Timothy, I'm sorry, Titus 3, 9 brings this up. He says, but avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and disputes about the law. Why? For they are unprofitable and worthless. Reject a, and here it is, reject a factious man after a first and second warning. Now, the problem is when we read this passage, you don't really see the word heretic or heresy there, but it actually is. If we go to verse 10, reject a factious man. The word factious is derived from the word heresy. This word, the Greek word is hieratikon, a factious man, a man who is a heretic. So what is a heretic? What is a heresy? Well, the word heresy or heretic derives from or is associated with someone who causes divisions or it is a division. So heresy, and it's not necessarily a good or a bad word. It can be a bad word. It can be a mature word, but not necessarily. A heresy is divisions. A heretic, however, is someone who causes divisions. Now, for us as Christians, there are those, especially Protestants, who might look at us as heretics. And so sometimes it's from the lens of the person that's looking at us. For example, the Catholic Church would obviously view Protestants as heretics. We have caused a division. We are divided ourselves up between uh, Catholicism and Protestantism. And so for them, we are heretics. Now, we don't have a problem with, with that um, because truth be told, we are as it relates to them. But then again, they are as it relates to us. They are heretics in our view. But simply put, a heresy is uh, a division. And here's what's interesting. Some heresies are actually good. They are necessary. Paul writes the church at Corinth and he's writing this letter to speak about that there be unity and not divisions. Does this mean that there should never be any time that we disagree or have an issue where I see it this way or you see it that way? No. There are going to be times where we're going to have a disagreement. Disagreements aren't divisions always. It's just we see things, certain things differently. And we'll get to kind of a more meaningful understanding a little bit. But Paul makes a kind of an odd statement uh, that we need to look at. He says, Verse 18 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 18. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that divisions exist. These, these schisms exist among you. And in part, I believe it. And look what he says. It's kind of odd when you, when you first see it. He says, for there must also be, and the word must, day, necessary, must also be factions among you. So that those who are approved may become evident among you. In other words, it needs, there needs to be these different heresies. It's okay. It's fine if they exist so that that way, those who are approved, those who actually know the text, understand what God is doing, uh, they can be evident uh, amongst those who are seeing it. And so he says, there must be factions among you so that those who are approved may become evident among you. So in other words, those true sound teachers, they seem to stand out compared to someone who is a heretic or someone who is teaching heresies. Again, because a person espouses a heresy doesn't always necessarily make them a heretic. However, it could. One of the things that heretics do, and this is where we start getting into who and what is a heretic. Uh, Peter brings this up in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. He says, but false prophets also rose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers. So notice what's equated. False teachers and false prophets are equated uh, as the same. And so he says, what do they do? Among you who will secretly introduce destructive, and there's that word, heresies. Now it's spelled out in English, but the same word is used over there in the Greek, uh, heresies, which is heresies, even some of them even going so far as to deny the master who bought them. And so what happens is 
they are going to false teachers, every false teacher, every false prophet is going to what they're going to do is they're going to bring in these divisions uh, and they do it in a myriad of ways. We're going to look at some of those in just a little bit, but be on guard for these people. They are going to. And obviously it's going to be subtle. Sometimes it's going to be um, clear. Sometimes it's going to be subtle, especially to the person who falls prey to these particular divisions. As a matter of fact, Paul brings this point up in Romans. He says to mark those who cause divisions uh, according to doctrine. Notice what he says here. Uh, keep an eye or mark those who cause dissensions and hindrances uh, contrary to the teaching which you have learned and turn away from them. Now, what's interesting here is uh, the people that can fall prey to a heresy can be an actual Christian. We would think that only non-Christians, people who don't really know the Lord or love the Lord or have the spirit, only they will fall prey to that. No, even believers can fall prey, fall victim to a heresy or to a heretic. Look what he says in verse 18, for such men, these people that are promoting these divisions uh, are slaves, not of our Lord, but of their own appetite. And look what he says, and by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. This word right here for the unsuspecting is two words. It's ah, which we use in front of a word is to negate something, so not. And then the word kakos, which is good or innocent. So the people who are unsuspecting, these are people who are believers. They are unsuspecting. They are innocent. They're, they're good, not innocent in terms of sin, but innocent in terms of being justified before the eyes of the Lord who can also be moved away, not from the Lord, that won't happen, but cause them to live a life that they shouldn't and hold to different heresies, hold to different things that can cause their life to be uh, unbalanced, not bringing glory to God because they just don't know. And so that is the marker of a heretic. A heretic causes division and he does so in the body doctrinally. There are those who are pretty clear, pretty evident, especially nowadays, and Thankfully, there are people who sound a warning about some of these people who say some things that are as blasphemous uh, and that are as wicked as they possibly can be. Uh, there are certain people who sometimes they seem nice, have a nice following, and they say things that are clearly antithetical to the scriptures. But you're waiting for somebody to give you something. And you could go ahead and force God's hand right now if you would take them shoes off and give them to somebody. You've got those that want to give themselves or ascribe power to themselves, that they are the keepers, they're the protectors of this particular realm against some sort of dark underworld. They and they alone are the ones that can do it. And they end up promoting, or causing people to look somewhere other than Christ. The earth is shifted from 3D to 5D. We are closer to the spirit world. I'm giving you, breaking it down. An attack on you, apostle, is an attack on the kingdom. So people don't understand that. You know, if you go down, the kingdom goes down. If you understand the realms of the spirit, there's a dimension called the Akashic records. They go up in those dimensions. Anybody remember the Bible says as far as the east is from the west? The Bible doesn't talk about that, the Akashic records. Because it's referring to that when it says he has removed your sins from as far as the east is from the west. That is where it is stored in the Akashic dimension. We've got those who want to take advantage of you financially and use every scheme. As a matter of fact, play on your desire. And in some cases, people's greed so that they would give and then in turn uh, they would be blessed back and they keep going through this circular uh, issue where they keep doing it over and over and over again because they desire to get rich and there's always someone who's going to help you do so. These heretics who will help you relieve yourself of some of your money. And God begin to talk to me. I need 100 envelopes if you have them. Please, quickly. He said there were 100 people in this building. That I'm getting ready to shift not only your house but your ministry and your business because I must do it because you are, you are the church pusher. Well, so that $1,033 come quick and run. He said it's not even a thought. Come right here in front of me quickly, 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 quickly. We've got those who would make blasphemous statements about Jesus. At the risk of being heretical tonight, might I suggest to you 85% of Jesus's life, he was out of order. And we've got some who think they have the same power as the Lord. And gives him dominion and power and says, now I don't even need to visit earth as much. I have somebody that will represent me. Yeah. Yes. Whom I have created in my image, in my likeness, that has my ability in him. 
This is why you are anointed. What heretics tend to do is they do a couple things. One, they obviously distort the picture of Christ, but they also distort living in Christ. They distort or they offer this bondage in the body that you could possibly have a demon or some generational curse while still being free. And they are the ones that can set you free. I will tell you this. When this message is over, you will be free. And if you don't agree with them, if you don't believe what they believe, then you are them and it's us versus them. They promote that and cause these divisions amongst the body. But the good news is, like what Paul says, is that when you compare these people and you compare them with someone with a text, one, they don't want to have the conversation. Two, they cannot have the conversation because they don't have a scriptural leg to stand on. However, they will at times, as a matter of fact, oftentimes they're going to use the Bible. They're going to use the word of God just to accomplish their goals. Think about it. The first person to try to use the word of God, but to twist it was Satan in the garden. He tells the woman, he tells Eve, did God, did not God say this? In other words, to distort, did God really say this? Well, he did say this, but this is what he means. And so they're going to do the same thing. As a matter of fact, we saw the devil do the exact same thing with Jesus. However, it's a stupid plan to do it with Jesus. Jesus is the one who gave us the word by the spirit. And so for him to do so, it just tells us the links that he would go to. If he would do it with the, with the very first people, and if he would do it with Jesus, he would do it with us. And so his goal, every heretic's goal, is to take the scriptures and to do so intentionally and consistently. The motive behind them is to lead you away from the Lord, whether they say that or not, or if they may even be doing it unbeknownst to them, uh, because you can be a foolish a foolish heretic. You can be the one who is deceived while deceiving others. As a matter of fact, Paul says, the spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith, the, the noun, the faith, the tense of the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctors of demon by means of hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron. And so you're going to see that happen often. You're going to see people who are going to want to lead you away either intentionally because they are intentional uh, in their uh, adherence towards things that are not biblical. They can be ignorant or they can be intentional, but they are going to be consistent. They are going to mean what it is that they are doing. Now, one question people ask is, can a believer be a heretic? Well, a believer can espouse a heresy, but can a believer be a heretic? It's kind of hard to see that being the case. I, have, I haven't come across an example in the Bible where a person is a who is a believer is also a heretic. Uh, I would say this, though, the lines can be blurred a little bit to where a believer can do things that are similar to what a heretic would do. And I would say be careful because it may also be that the person who is doing the things that a heretic will do. We might actually find that the person is actually not a believer. This is why Paul, along with Jesus, says that we should examine ourselves, make sure that we are who we say we are internally, only you yourselves. And the Lord will know that. Now, we can judge on the outside by what someone is doing. And what is our job if we see someone that's promoting something that is divisive to the body, that is causing a problem in the body? We are to warn those. Now, remember, some are going to conflate the two that if a person warns about a heretic, if a person is doing the warning, is the one who's being divisive, the one who is uh, causing the divisions. No, a true believer does not call a true believer that holds the sound doctrine does not divide the body. They can point out what does divide, and it would be those who aren't aligned with the scriptures who will think that the person who's actually doing their job is the one that's being divisive. We don't let a person commit a crime, and then after they commit a crime, blame the police for dividing the body because they took them to jail because they arrested them. No, that's not how this works. So if a person is out there going contrary to scripture, and the only way that a person can know he's going contrary to scripture is if they themselves understand the scriptures. Heretics do their very best to stay away from the scriptures. Why? Because it's not a source where they are going to find victory, especially with someone who knows the scriptures. So make sure that you are not one yourself causing or bringing about some sort of heresy and that you're not aligned with someone else. If there is a number of people that are saying, hey, listen, I am warning you about what this person is doing. Take heed. I'm not talking about disagreements about certain doctrinal issues, such as maybe tongues, maybe once saved, always saved, things like that. I'm not talking about those issues, things regarding, let's say, the end times. No, I'm talking about things that lead you away from, that promote 
a bondage inside the body that distort Christ, that brings about a different gospel, meaning that you're saved another way you live this way. Those sorts of things, those things that hurt a person's walk and ultimately lead them away from having a life that's focused on magnifying Christ. Amen.